welcome everybody now. It's uh, it's Lizzie Collins here. I hope you can all see me. Um, I'm the founder and director of the Laker Gallery. I want to welcome you to our Zoom today, which is celebrating the opening of the exhibition of Trevor Sutton's new work. And the exhibition is called Small World. And we're delighted to have opened it today in our Woodstock Gallery. Um, and I'm delighted today to be joined by Trevor, who is in Woodstock and uh, surrounded by his work. And uh, wonderful to have you here, Trevor. Thank you, Lizzie, and welcome, everybody. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping um, for, before we get started. Um, just to let you know that um, we are recording this Zoom because uh, it's it's nice for people who aren't able to make it to, to watch the recording back. If you don't want to be seen, um, please keep your turn your video off. And um, uh, it's also if you can keep yourself on mute, that's also really helpful. Um, we will maximum be taking an hour of your time um, and we would welcome questions in the chat box which I'll be monitoring and I'll ask them at the uh, most appropriate time or at the end of our discussion. Um, but uh, thank you for joining us today and it's, it's been a beautiful day here in Woodstock to celebrate Trevor's opening and um, it's our second exhibition with Trevor Sutton. Uh, the first was a couple of years ago and uh, today we have work which has been made before and after COVID. Um, I wonder whether uh, you want to sort of expand on that a little bit, Trevor. Well, the earliest work, which uh, are paintings from 2019, uh, are paintings that were made uh, as a response to um, being in uh, Orkney. Um, and being in France. Um, there are works on paper from, uh, from France as well, which were a little bit earlier. Then uh, 2020 is when um, I spent with Carol Robertson, my wife, uh, six months in Norfolk, staying with Sylvia Ackling, Roger's widow. Uh, and that really is the sort of filling in the sandwich, if you like, of the exhibition. And then there, there's a set of work which has been made this year, 2021, which I think are a result of the works on paper that were made in 2020. So there's three sets of work, uh, 2019, 2020, and this year. Well, this opening slide here we, is a lovely slide. This is from um, from your stay in Norfolk, which we'll talk about a little bit more later on. We're, we're, we'll, we'll move on to the next slide now, which just shows you an introduction to the Gallery of Woodstock for those of you who haven't been, been there. We're on the um, we're on Park Street in the main area of Woodstock, and we're very lucky to have this beautiful building, which I have to say, having opened the exhibition today, seems to fit Trevor's work beautifully. Um, the light, um, and we've got a wonderful technician who hung it um, really well. It just seems to, to, to work really, really beautiful, be beautifully with this, um, this bay window here. So you're very welcome to come and see us in Woodstock. There is a train station, Oxford Parkway, if you're coming from London, and a bus ride, so it's not too tricky. Um, but we'll move through here. Um, and I'm going to say this wrong again, Trevor. I can never say this. <laughs> this is Alarak. <laughs> Alarak. Um, and so Alarak is uh, in the Midi Pyrenees. I love these photographs of these works that you've, you've made there. I mean, it looks like the most amazing place to be staying. I wondered if you could tell us more about Alarak and how that came about and, um, and your work. That well, came uh, Alarak is a very special, very beautiful, very romantic uh, environment to make work in. Uh, and I was invited along with Carol to uh, do a residency there of a, a month by uh, the man that runs it, Charles Irving. And what, what you're looking at is what effectively is the studio, the artist's studio. Uh, and the image on the left is the work that I made uh, during that period laid out on the top of the table that you can see on the right. Uh, 
Um, and the table is is a, a extraordinary piece of oak. Uh, it, it's uh, uh, a piece of sculpture. It's, it's just a great object. Uh, and, and that served uh, as the working surface. Uh, so work was, was uh, made uh, on, uh, on this uh, wonderful tabletop in this extraordinary environment. You can hear the phone ringing. Um, and I think the work that I made uh, was a response to um, things seen in and around the area of Alarac and in other parts of France, because we, we weren't just based there, we spent time traveling uh, through France and we stayed in other places for short periods. At one period, we're in an area called Cray, uh, where we stayed with a very beautiful uh, Swiss architect, Roland Schmidt and, he, and his wife. So I, I made drawings, I made photographs, and then uh, when I say drawings, they were linear drawings. They, 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 I, no way was I trying to reproduce, if you like, what I was seeing in front of me. I, I was um, making linear drawings of the structure, of facades, of interiors, etc., uh, abandoned buildings. And those drawings and photographs uh, served as the spur the, uh, to, to initiate these works, these collages on paper which are laid out on the table. Uh, how long were you staying there, Trevor? We, we stayed there for um, a month, uh, oh. which was fantastic. Uh, and, and it's quite high there. And we're quite close to Albi, which, you know, is a very, very beautiful toulouse lautrec Museum at Albi, a wonderful city. Uh, so you're high and, and you have spectacular views, extraordinary vistas. Uh, but it was more, uh, I suppose, being in that environment, I, I found very stimulating, very, dare I say, releasing. You know, it, 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 it enabled me to get on with making the images that I, I, I felt uh, were the things to make, uh, the things that I related to. But it was in this space, in this environment, in this light, which is very important. The light is very special. Uh, and we were there in a time of year when, when there was a lot of sunshine, obviously. Uh, and it's very interesting when you get the work back to the London studio. Uh, and it looks quite different. And, and it's definitely to do with the light. Uh, when the work was made, as opposed to when you know, come back to London and looking at it, uh, and in some ways exciting, in other ways quite disappointing, dare I say, but uh, certainly different. I don't think there's anything disappointing about this series. <laughs> well, that's really um, I absolutely love this series of work. They're really truly beautiful, and I think there's such a calmness and stillness, and it seems to me um, it's almost like going on retreat. Um, that's very true. That's a very nice way of putting it. Yes. Yeah. And having the space to, um, you know, the mental and physical space. I mean, there's a lot of physical space there as well to be getting on with the work and to be Absolutely. allowed. And we ate and drank locally. We basically looked after ourselves, but it, it was, it's very rural. This, this is wonderful um, in the grounds of, of the studio space that we were just looking at. This is just outside and a beautiful seat. Uh, you can see just almost buried there, which overlooked a, a wonderful valley. And, you know, six o'clock, seven o'clock, it was a glass of wine. It, it was the end of the day and the beginning of the evening. It was beautiful. And it was, uh, uh, it made you feel good to be alive. Well, it looks like an incredibly beautiful area to stay. And I think also the colors there, of the, it's quite interesting looking at your work and looking at the colors of the landscape, which are actually quite sort of, I guess muted but bright at the same time and then looking at the light of the architecture you can see it's really wonderful to have these photographs to sort of contextualize the work. Well there was another thing about being there uh, and I, 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 it's something I thought about uh, more recently. It, you know, it's not just the look of things but it, it's, it's the, the feel of things. You know there's almost a smell about the place which is unlike anywhere else I've ever been. And 
when I was making the work, I, th I, th I was almost conscious of, of, of trying to um, evoke the atmosphere of the place as, as much as uh, being stimulated by uh, the architecture and, and the structure and etc. It, it was a desire to, well, dare I say, you know, try and, and, and explain something about the beautiful, beautiful atmosphere of, of that part of the world. We've got a couple more images from that part of the world here. So, well, this is in, in fact near Albi, and these are, you know, just beautifully painted shutters, uh, which I, I mean, I, it's, it's put in together um, structures and colors that you can, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't want to invent this. I want to see it and then use it. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm all for making um, life easy. And, and this, this seeing things like this and, and, and relating to them, enjoying them, celebrating them is, is what I try and make my work about. Someone said this to me in the gallery today and I think it felt to me like it, it was quite an astute comment that your work is rather than abstract, it's abstracted. What do you think about that? Well, I, I, I think that's a fair comment. Uh, I've, I've always thought of myself as um, an abstract artist. And uh, when, when I was a student in the 60s, I, I was very uh, interested in minimal art um, and I still am. But I, I realized that actually I, I need uh, something to work from to, uh, to construct my paintings. I, 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 don't, I don't think I'm a conceptual artist. Uh, I'm an artist who, who wants to make statements about the world that I live in. And beautiful statements they are. Here's a love, another source photo, I guess, that you sent us to show your inspiration. Well, this is a set of wonderful garages in, in Neon, and it was a beautiful place, the absolutely overwhelming, overwhelming smell of lavender. It's from that area. And, and strangely enough, well, maybe not strangely enough, but um, these beautiful colours, you know, they seem to echo again the whole feel of the place. You know, I, I think the French have a wonderful way of um, describing the, where they live. Uh, and and I, I wanted to uh, try and relate to that and, and yeah. Make... Well, it looks to me like, it, you know, this is nowhere you would find in England, you know, <laughs> it's definitely very... No, I, certainly not. I, you yeah. know, I, I live in the East End of London and, and, and I, you know, there's great things about that. But um, no, uh, the... Uh, the uh, garage doors, but not that there are many garages, but uh, the doors aren't quite like this, that's for sure. Yeah. What I love about this photo on the right is sort of the painterliness, even of the garage doors with the, 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 the blue coming through on the purple one, the lavender one on the left, you know, it, it does feel, I can see why you took the photo. Um, well, well, and again, of course, that's very much to do with heat. It's to do with the sun. Um, and yeah. the effect it has, uh, you know, on, on the paint. It's, it, 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 it's what I, I try and achieve um, artificially, but this is done, you know, naturally by the sun. Yeah, it's beautiful. And here we have um, the work that you made at that time. Yes, the two on the left uh, are from Cray. Uh, and one, the source of that was um, the studio of uh, uh, the Swiss architect, Roland. Um, who was very keen on red, so <laughs> uh, that, that came into it. But, but the building itself, the extension, the atelier was, you know, had a lot of red in it. And the one in the middle, um, the source of that was a, a beautiful abandoned concrete barn, quite brutalist in appearance, in a, a very big open field. There was a lot of organic farming in that area. Uh, very, very beautiful again. And the one on the right is from Alarac and actually is, um, I think, a reference to, to one of the uh, studio doors uh, or windows, a, a shutter, you know, it's, uh, so that was very immediate, very close. And here we've got Study for Neons. Is Neons close by? What's the title there? 
Yeah, uh, well, that's the garage doors that we were looking at. That that yeah. was. Yeah. And what's lovely, it's, uh, it's, I was thinking, it looked, we've got an yeah. install shot here as well. Oh, right, yes. Well, and, and that's next to uh, uh, the paint on the right of it is uh, shutter painting. Uh, and I suppose that's, you know, fairly self-explanatory. It's about uh, shutters. Uh, again, panels which are allowing light in, an aunt. Uh, um, so it, it, it's the play of um, formal structure with uh, the way things are painted, the color of things, how they interact, how you have real constructed lines, you have pencil lines occasionally, and you have uh, lines that are created by just two colors touching each other. Uh, and it's that play of, of all these things which have been initiated by seeing something and it becomes something else. Uh, and the rhythm that goes into the work, the feel of the work, it has its own personality. It takes on its, its own feel, but it does relate to that that, that exists uh, and, and has been seen. It also seems to me that there's a sort of physicality um, with these diptychs, which obviously there's the line between the two yes. um, panels. Are they panels? Um, yes. I forget the panels, yeah. So there's the line between the two panels. It's almost like they're sort of collages themselves. And then you have the collages as well, which are um, themselves. So there's a very sort of physical sense of these works that, as well. That's very true. Um, uh, and in fact, I, I, you know, I've often um, thought about the work as being constructed as opposed to painted. Yes, of course, they're painted, they're drawn and they're painted. But I think about it in terms of construction. I construct the collages. When I make the paintings, I feel as if I am constructing. I mean, I, I, I've spoken to architect friends uh, uh, about the work in the studio, so, sometimes when it's, you know, being made. I mean, actually, the conversation is, is almost as if one's on a building site, which is, you know, I love. I think it's fantastic to, talking about the work, you know, mid construction uh, and what might happen. You know, it's almost like saying, will the door go there? Or you know, it isn't quite that literal. But um, and, and I feel that about how the surface is made, what color they're going to be, you know, the, all those things. Like it's it's constructing. And they're obviously um, very sensitive choices. And um, I think, you know, getting the tone right with the transitions, you know, it's incredibly important. And I think you really, you know, nail it, if I may say. <laughs> and I think that must be one of the hardest things though, is the consideration that comes into each of the constructed parts. It is, and, and, and I quite often deliberately um, change the order. So the great thing about working with a diptych um, is the panels, separate panels can be worked on obviously separately, and that they could be in opposite ends of the studio. Uh, I could deliberately turn one to the wall. Uh, I could change the order. Um, you know, what was left can become right, etc. cetera. Uh, what was a, a vertical hang uh, becomes a horizontal hang. I usually, in the back of, of, of the panels, have slots, uh, which enable me to hang the work in more than one uh, place. Uh, and, and that's very important. It's, it's part of the, the pleasure uh, of, of making the paintings. And, and it's as close as I can get to how I, uh, I make the collages. It enables me to not paint a picture. It's quite interesting to move on from these two works then from France to these photographs we've got of your work, or of your work, of, of your visit to Orkney. Well, um, this was, yeah, that's, sorry, sorry, Lizzie, carry on. No, that's what I was going to say. So it's interesting to, it's an interesting transition from France to Orkney and looking at the kind of what's interesting to you and the similarities, you know, but obviously a completely different location. Well, a very different location. And uh, one of the reasons we went to Orkney, apart from having never been there before, uh, was to um, join in with the celebrations of, of um, 
the 40th anniversary of, of the Pier Gallery in Stromness. Um, there was a connection there with uh, the architects who, who built the extension, Rielken Hall, uh, and with Roger Acklin, who had worked there. And uh, we, want, we wanted to uh, go to Orkney, and uh, it, it was an extraordinary experience. Uh, and most of the walks we made were coastal walks. And, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's pretty tough, but in the most beautiful way. Uh, and, and I felt, because I, I have pretty bad vertigo, so some of my walks were fairly, you know, I, I um, yes, I, I didn't always enjoy myself 100%, but it, it was, uh, it was fantastic, and, and it was stimulating, and it, a totally different uh, situation to France, you know, France, you're inland, and, and you, you know, you're, <laughs> you're safe. Uh, dare I say, but uh, you know, here, the, I, I felt vulnerable, uh, but in a stimulating way. Uh, and I, I, I actually, I, I'm rather keen on putting my back to the land sometimes. I, I quite like that. I think uh, it, I've always wanted to go to that gallery and I have to say, I'm very jealous that you've been. Um, it's one of the places I, I would love to go. Uh, and it just sounds like the most amazing it's one of, one of the most beautiful galleries in one of the most extraordinary environments and situation. Uh, I, I recommend it to everybody. It, it's it's great. Yes. And here we have, the, I guess these look like standing stones in the water. Um, which they are, they're stacks. And, they're and, stacks, and, yeah. and, and they are big and they're, they are wonderful and very sculptural. And you just make you think of the world being there for a long time. Uh, I think they are, they're magnificent, they're great objects. They truly are, and it's interesting to see. So I'm just going to move on to this shutter painting. This again relates to uh, to, to France, actually. This is I say, was this France? Because it's called shutter, but then you've got these amazing kind of vertical grey columns on the left, which is quite interesting. Well, um, this again is to do with facades, it yeah. is to do with uh, like doors, basically. Um, but, but it's interesting to see. And here we have another install shot. So we've got Orkney painting one on the left, which is a diptych, and Stromless painting on the right. Well, uh, or Orkney painting was very much a response to. Um, the buildings and the light um, in, in the part of Orkney that we were staying, uh, the, the, although we stayed in more than one place. Uh, the painting on the right, which is Stromness, was a direct response to actually being inside the Pier Gallery uh, and the wonderful naturally lit spaces uh, and looking out actually to see. Uh, you're actually at the entrance of the harbour. You are literally on, you know, on the pier's edge. It, 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 it's wonderful, and and I was so um, moved by uh, th this extraordinary environment. I fell in love with it. Uh, I felt I really had to make my own version of it, if you like. Um, yeah, and I. I, I uh, so in terms of your working, to your method and practice you yes. you you have this wonderful experience in the in the um it's the peer peer gallery um and do you make sketches Trevor or do you store it up here so it's photographs and uh, I did make some drawings back in London uh, yeah. uh, um and it was it it was basically from the photographs, but it, it fell together very quickly uh, as a piece, although it took a long time to make. Um, the structure of it was fairly clear because it, it was almost like one was walking into a space and out of a space. It, 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 the, there was an attempt to create quite deep space in, in this painting. So I, I, actually the panel on the right, you know, the, the, the first, uh, light gray next to the, the almost white color um, come, comes down to the bottom of the panel. So it's almost as if it is in front yeah. physically. 
uh, and, and it, the gallery was like that. You were sort of invited to, to weave in between the, 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 the screens and divisions in, in the space. And, I, and that was, that was uh, for me, that was quite, um, quite new in a way, um, because I, 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 you know, I, I see the paintings being spatial, but the, the, the rhythm was very much from left to right, right to left. Whereas this suddenly was also opening up the space in a very different way. So you, you were, you're going left to right, right to left, but you could go back. You, you were invited to occupy, I hope, the space mentally in a different way. That's beautiful. We have here a close up of Orkney painting one, which is the one on the left of that previous and that's the biggest painting in the exhibition. Um, and I have to say, when it was installed, um, the light, the, the sunshine coming in into the gallery was fantastic. And it just, you know, it, it, it became flooded with light uh, and it glowed. It, it was almost as if uh, the thing was neon. It, it was uh, quite wonderful. And then we have a close up of the Stromness painting that we were just talking about. Yes, and, and you can see the panel more, more clearly there. Right yeah. here, yeah. Yes. yeah. And we'll move on to um, last year. Yes. Well, so this, this was an extraordinary time. Very extraordinary time. Um, Carol and I decided at the invitation of Sylvia Acklin uh, to leave London, um, partly because London was pretty crazy uh, and we didn't feel comfortable. Um, and Carol had been quite ill. And again, she was vulnerable. Um, so we left for Norfolk, thinking we were probably going to stay maximum two or three weeks. Um, and we ended up staying nearly six months. Uh, and where we were staying, the, it's the coach house to Vowood House. Vowood is um, an arts and crafts uh, house uh, by Pryor. And the, the building we're looking at on the left is where Roger and Sylvia live, where Roger used to live, obviously. Um, and it was the coach house. And the photograph on the right is, is a raked courtyard. Uh, Roger used to rake on a regular basis. And the little window on the right is the window of the space we use as a, a studio, studio stroke bedroom. That's where we lived basically. Um, so we'd look out on this raked uh, gravel uh, area with two beautiful cherry trees in. What an extraordinary place to find yourself. Well, we were very lucky and, and uh, Sylvia was very generous. And, and the great thing was that we, um, we'd escaped something, you know, uh, but, and we, we were um, able to maybe turn our backs on it a little bit, which sounds slightly selfish, but, uh, you know, we couldn't deal with it. So it, it was nice to be away from it. And, we got on with things that were practical, which were to do with the maintenance of, of the garden and, and the house. And uh, there was a lot of work. Um, so Sylvia and Carol and myself, we were all, we were working together and it was absolutely fantastic. Um, and we constructed things and we did things and we planted things and we pruned things. And in between, um, work was made. The house looks like the most amazing structure with unbelievable shapes here, which I can see come through to your work. Indeed, uh, yes. That, I wonder that. how aware you were at the time of the influence it was having. Uh, I became more and more deliberately uh, influenced by the place. I allowed it to, uh, to, to come into the work. I wanted to, I wanted to I, you know, make a record of, of where we were at that particular time. 
but I, I also found the interior, being in that interior for such a long time, and the exterior uh, for such a long time, very stimulating, very beautiful. And um, I wanted to make work about that. It sounds like it was uh, diff sort of different, but quite a, an amazing time. We've got some photographs here of the garden where I know you spent quite a lot of time. Yes, well, it, it, it's yes. There's me on the left creating. <laughs> I said to Trevor earlier, "Who's that?" <laughs> <laughs> it's gardener, it's, it's Trevor. Yes, it's the gardener, which is me uh, creating uh, the what what ended up being on the right, which were these huge. Um, I think there were four uh, vegetable um, areas. You know, they're um, I was very proud of them. It was a good piece of uh, woodwork. And Carol and I made those together, which was lovely. And, um, no, it, it was a fantastic time. And of course, we, you know, we had the luxury of it eating what we grew. So this is all on the right. So this is how it was. So it just shows how long you were there that you constructed yes. and grew food. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's quite yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, and th this is the work, um, all the pieces, I think, that were made. And this, this is actually back in my studio um, after the, uh, the work, when it was made. I, I only worked on, a, uh, on the horizontal, on, on tabletop, uh, and it, it was works on paper, oil on paper, and in the case of the four triangles at the bottom left, uh, watercolor on paper. Um, and I, they were just let, left on paper. I took them back to London um, to my studio eventually and made a decision that they would exist as objects on the wall. I didn't want to frame them as, as drawings. I wanted them to exist as objects. And it was partly uh, thinking about uh, Roger Acklin's work, which was small, but occupied space in the most beautiful way. So um, I, I, I felt it was the right thing to do. And it, ended up uh, being uh, mounted on, on corium, which is a copolymer that's usually used for uh, work tops in kitchens, etc. And uh, somebody very kindly, Gary Woodley, who works in the studio next to me in London, cut these for me. And they, they have little um, keyhole fittings on the back, so, so they hang on a single screw. And they're, they're amazing in that they're so different to, well, they're obviously so connected, but also so different. It's quite a departure in terms of the scale. Yes. Um, and the shape. Well, I, I, it, it was um, also reacting very quickly and immediately to things that occurred and were seen. Uh, it, it wasn't just making reference to the architecture of the building or, the, you know, the, the divisions in the wall or, you know, the apex of, of, of a studio, etc. It was also to do with um, seeing things like books, for example. Uh, and there's a little set in the middle bottom, and th which look like the, that they are actually based on the cover of three books. You know, that, that, that's, that, that was the origin. And, and I allowed myself to um, make work from all things that I found visually exciting and stimulating and um, try and make work that uh, had a bit of fun, had a bit of play in it. Um, what you know, do you think about the palette? Someone said today, and I think I agree, it's a brighter palette than your previous series. Well, I, I went with, uh, but with the exception of the, the uh, four triangles um, on the left, which I, the watercolor, I, the color of those I made, um, I painted them um, in in, uh, in Norfolk, whereas the the other um, collages, which are oil on paper, I I, I took a box of pre-painted um, elements with me. So I, I had a fantastic box full of, of paper, of offcuts, of bits uh, from years back. Uh, so I used um, 
the colour that I, I'd previously used in other work. Um, so it, it was the old making the new. I've got some photographs of the work before it was mounted. Yes, th this would be on the, um, the work surface uh, in what was Roger's studio work, work space. Um, and that's, that's, th th this is uh, called Japanese garden, which makes reference to the, uh, the rate garden that we were looking at uh, um, earlier. Got a couple of questions coming in. There's one I'll turn to later from Jeremy Morgan, but the one at the moment from Linda Connolly is asking you about the Corian. Yes. And what sort of, I don't, I don't know, what sort of glue you use because it seems ingenious, she says. How did you <laughs> That's <get> a very, <laughs> very nice thing to say. Um, I've never thought of myself as ingenious, but uh, <laughs> uh, that's, thank you. Uh, that's that's nice. It, it, the um, the collages are, are first uh, mounted onto a single piece of thick paper and they're attached with conservation tape, double-sided. Um, and then that whole thing, that whole shape, and it's now quite, quite strong and rigid, is, is fixed to the Corian again with double-sided conservation tape, which is very powerful. But of course, you only get one hit on this. So uh, the, the actual shape is cut in Corian uh, and then the, the, the work, the, the, uh, the collage is lowered very carefully. Uh, and what I have to do on the sides of the Corian is actually put wood so I can slide um, the collage, <laughs> uh, hopefully ensuring that it's gonna be in the right place. A very delicate process. Um, very, because once it's stuck, it's stuck. Uh, and yeah. that's it. You, you don't get a second chance. Yeah. Uh, she's also asked if they're matte varnished, but I'm not sure that they are, are they? They're not matte varnished, but they are um, sp sprayed with, with uh, a fixative. Uh, this is, um, I forget who make it, but um, it, it, it's a conservation uh, fixative. Uh, and they have three or four coats which should protect it um, and certainly makes the surface less vulnerable. So here again we have the the coach house yes, um, series which is in well that's the the tabletop that I worked on uh, they're the windows looking out on the right garden uh, and on the shelf you see a, um, a collection of beautiful pots uh, Roger was um, a collector of pots, he, he, he liked ceramics, so it was, um, we, we had that to look at every day, which was very beautiful. And the triangles? Well, the triangles, um, these are watercolour, so I, I, as I said, I actually painted the, uh, the paper. Uh, um, one set was called Night Triangle, and the other set was called Local Colour. Local colour, I suppose, speaks for itself. It, it was trying to uh, um, evoke the, the local colour at that time of the year. Um, and night triangles were, in fact, um, pieces that I made at night in artificial light. Now, it's not something I, you know, I, I, I don't normally do that. Um, but I, I actually liked um, working late. Um, um, it only happened once, and I, I can't tell you why, but it, it, it just did. Um, and it felt, felt the right time to make it, basically. So, uh, you know, these were night triangles. They're beautiful, beautifully balanced. Um, I'm going to come to Jeremy's question. Oh, we've got two days here. Well, it's a simple one, two days. It was made in two days and uh, <laughs> six, six uh, divisions, six sections. Uh, and uh, I, I think three, three, then three, and it was two days. And, uh, you know, it was one of those little things that uh, you, you look at and think, actually, that's, that's got a presence. That's, that's got something going for it, which is uh, why, well, it just happens. And, and it, I, I enjoyed, um, that sort of division with, with thinner bars and, and fatter ones, flat colour and slightly brushy colour, you know, all those things. 
the vertical brush stroke, the horizontal. It, it, it was it allowed me to do that because I was in an environment that uh, said, "Go ahead," you know. It's what's around you. You just touched on a, a, the, Jeremy Morgan's question, which was about your brushwork. So I think I'll bring that in now. Okay. Um, and he wanted to know your thoughts on on the smooth surfaces you achieve with your work and the relationship with the occasional brushworks, which can be seen on some panels uh, versus the flat colours on others. And I think we were also talking about this today because somebody commented with your oils that it can look almost like sort of Renaissance tempera. And you've just sort of said it how you, you do delight in it, but it'd be really interesting to hear your thoughts on that with regard to the oils as well. Well, I, I try and bring in areas and it doesn't always uh, happen, but in, in a lot of the painting, I try and bring something in which uh, allows air into the work, which uh, let, let, lets the surface breathe a bit. I mean, I, I suppose this goes back a little bit to the idea of sunshine on, on painted doors. You know, I, I want them to, um, not push you away, but invite you in. The more recent work I, I've been making, I, I've actually made um, less so. Uh, I, and why, I, I, I don't know. I'm asking myself that question, but I, I do like bringing in um, air. Um, I, I like to think that the, the paintings are, are inviting you to, to join them, to look at them, to feel them, to experience them. I don't want it to push you away. Um, that's, a, that's a lovely thought. And I'll, I haven't thought about the air. Um, we often think about light, but not air. So I'll definitely remember that, Trevor. Um, <laughs> as somebody's mentioned the shape paintings, imagining them as sculptures. And they said, you, the question is, are you tempted to make 3D works? But uh, I guess this is where it's difficult being on a, uh, on a screen because they are 3D with the Corian, aren't they? But I guess the question is, and I look, especially I, I guess it comes to mind, your interest in architecture and the Orkney stacks, it's quite a sculptural element to your, to yes. your work. Is that something you've ever considered? Yes, it is. And it's been suggested more than once. Um, and one thing that has happened, I, I've a, actually have made some large, triangles, um, isosceles, equilateral, right angle, triangles, you know, which are sort of uh, 30 inches high. Um, so they'll be more of a presence. But the idea of, of, of um, sculpture, I have thought about it. Yes, I have. Um, uh, maybe it will happen. I, I, I don't Does, know. Those triangles are they being made now in response to this recent work? Is that yes? They've, they've been made. They're, they're, been made. They're so made. that's the next. So the next thing. Well, oh, fantastic. Well, we look forward to seeing those. Me <laughs> That sounds very exciting. Yeah, um, no. And here we have um, the work as it is now hung in in the gallery, um, and. Yeah, I, it was wonderful. You came with a plan, <laughs> which we enacted. We did, and it was very important that uh, there was a plan because um, it, it involved quite a lot of work to get this um, in the state that it's in um, and, and required measurement and consideration. Um, so it was very important that it was pre-planned. And I think by and large, we stuck to the plan, so it, it worked. No, I'm delighted um, with, with the way it looks, and I think um, it, 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 if everyone, if anyone can come to the gallery, it also rewards close viewing to see how three-dimensional they are, because obviously this is a frontal shot, um, um, but they do have this wonderful sculptural presence as, as sort of objects, really, as well, don't they? I think they have that they, you know, they um, they, they do have um, a real feel about them, a, a realness, you, you, you know, a, a, um, <clears throat> they, they almost like objects on a shelf, uh, and I quite like that, yeah. And it's lovely to see also how they relate to each other, but they also um, stand up individually. Well, they were, they're presented like one, two, three on the top line, uh, those long, thin, horizontal ones. That was the sequence they were made in. And I quite often, well, nearly always make more than one version of something. Uh, I, I've done that for a long time. Uh, when I'm in the studio, you know, if I'm making paintings, 
there's always more than one being made. Um, so with the works uh, on paper, I often made three, sometimes four, sometimes two. I think the biggest set was five. Uh, there's a, the third set down from the top, uh, which is called Coach House, which references the, uh, the Coach House itself. Um, there was five. And there's another set uh, called Looking Back, which are equilateral triangles. And there was uh, five of those as well. Just moving through, this is a very interesting work because this is a set which is not, these are individual works, but it is a set. It is, it's one piece in four parts. This is the most recent painting um, in the exhibition. Um, it's, um, and I, I was thinking, reflection, there are two things. You've got a top bottom, so potentially uh, yellow is reflected as brown, black as blue, vice versa. And then you can work the other way, reflection, you know, red is reflecting orange, uh, purple, black. But that's, that's a fairly um, straightforward way of looking at it formally. But I, I think it was in this time, uh, I think I was thinking very much about reflecting on what I'd done. Uh, and this I saw as, you know, like a circular piece, how things just uh, repeat and come round. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a strength, I think, more than a weakness. I, I like it. I like to reflect. It's a very good strength. And I think thinking about the air, you've literally let the air in with this work, with these gaps, which is rather lovely. Well, the gap is the same width as, as the uh, bands of colour. So it's one and a half inches. I'm sorry about the uh, inches measurement, but I, I still always work in, in feet and inches. I, I, I don't work in centimetres. Some wonderfully um, positive comments about your work coming in on the chat box. Um, um, just finishing here, really, we've got 10 minutes left. So if anybody's got their questions, um, please pop them into the chat box now. Um, here we've got a photograph of Trevor in his studio. And uh, I, I love this photo. Well, I love your studio, Trevor, I have to say. It's such a calm place to be. And, um, well, it, it's ordered and, uh, you know, I, I have to uh, have things ordered and, and I have things other than the, you know, the stuff I use to make the work. I have stones, I have wood, I have other things, uh, I have books, I have music, you know, the, these are the, so the studio is... We have music, here's music. Well, this is, you know, this is a part of the collection I, and I like playing CDs, I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm old school if you like. I actually like picking something up and, you know, looking at it before I play. So this is some of the, the music that I play. And I always, well, always, nearly always work to music. And it's quite often quite ambient music. Um, and I like there's some current Americana music very much. And I like a lot of jazz. So there's a, there's a nice mixture. And, and I find that uh, enables me to... Uh, relax and get on with the work. Well, Trevor, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm so honored that we can show your work at the gallery and I'm so thrilled with how it's come together actually. And it seems like it's been a very special day um, for us in the gallery today with you and, and the work. And um, I'm so grateful to everyone also joining us today on Zoom that we've been able to share it with you. If you are able to come up, the exhibition is on until the end of September. We would love to show you. I don't know if there are any other burning questions, but if there aren't, it looks like the, the questions have slowed down. It just remains for me to thank you all for coming and joining us. And, and thank you, Trevor. Well, um, Lizzie, thank, thank you. you. And to everybody that's, uh, I can't see any of you, I'm afraid. So I, I, I don't know who's, who's uh, looking at me. I, I uh, thank you. Um, it's a great privilege to, uh, to share my work with you. Thank you. Okay, thanks everybody.